Welcome to this module on this biocompatibility of 100% uh, strontium substituted silica, alumina, phosphor, um, uh, P2O5, CO and CF to glass ceramics. So, what I am going to uh, do in this particular module is to show you that uh, what uh, how to conduct that uh, preclinical study in the rabbit model using this uh, femoral defect model. Um, and also what is the uh, how that osseo integration of any material can be qualitatively and quantitatively established in uh, uh, can be quantitatively established using uh, an array of techniques which include um, uh, histology, microcomputer tomography and so on and so forth. So, first I will start with this. Uh, briefly about this glass ceramic materials. In one of the earlier modules, I have mentioned this glass ceramic materials and let me reiterate that glass ceramic materials is derived from a glass composition uh, which contains certain characteristic shape of the crystals or which contains um, finite volume fraction of crystals with particular size and shape. And this crystallization of the glasses is possible because of certain heat treatment technique which is known as ceramizing treatment. So, let me one second emphasize this technique which is called ceramizing treatment. Ceramizing treatment essentially means you heat you heat treat the glass materials, you heat treat the glass at T less than much lower than T m, T m is that melting temperature of the glass and <coughs> this process will involve that ceramizing process will involve the nucleation and growth of the crystalline phases within the glass matrix itself. So, any specific composition may not be a glass forming composition, you need to have some composition which is called which should have glass forming ability like silica for example, SiO2 has a glass forming ability. So, and this particular material also contains silica. Now, the question is that when why to why to use strontium and why 100 percent strontium substituted glass ceramics. Now, strontium is one of the materials I think in one of the earlier modules I have mentioned that strontium renalate is one of the commonly used drug. So, it is a most commonly used drug for osteoporosis treatment. Now, to briefly mention what is osteoporosis, osteoporosis is essentially bone loss and this bone loss essentially is triggered because of the larger population of osteoclast cells and it is more than that osteoblast that is the bone forming cells. Okay. So, that osteoporosis is essentially triggered by that osteoclast cells and as a result that uh, that, uh, that older patients actually uh, they have much weaker bone and so on. So, many orthopedic surgeons they normally prescribe this commonly used drug that strontium renalate and inspired by the use of strontium renalate there is some limited research activities uh, in my group as well as elsewhere in the world uh, where people have tried to dope certain glass ceramic materials with strontium. The idea is that I, or rational for developing this kind of material is that that when the glass ceramic materials when it will undergo in vitro dissolution process then slowly they will release strontium also. Now, the strontium can strike a healthy balance of the osteoblast cells in one hand and between osteoblast and osteoclast cells. So, therefore, that use of strontium can be rationalized to treat that osteoporosis treatment. So, having said that this, this particular glass ceramic materials were <coughs> sintered by this following route. So, essentially glass melting takes place at 1475 degree for 2 hours and as I said in the last uh, in, in one of the earlier modules that typically in a multi component glass composition one needs to use sequential melting or repeated melting technique to homogenize the glass composition. So, this uh, this <coughs> frequent melting operation frequent melting is used 
to homogenize that glass composition. And that once this glass material is done, uh, glass melt is prepared in a conventional furnace, then you can simply quench the glass composition to prepare a glass frit to avoid phase separation and crystallization. And once you get the glass frit, you can just ball mill it like in a conventional powder metallurgical process for 16 to 24 hours. Then after that you ball mill it and then this powders ball milled powder you can dry it and then dry it powder is sieved and then you can do spark plasma sintering, SPS stands for spark plasma sintering or you can do conventional sintering just to get that glass ceramic materials. Now, once you get that conventional sintering spark plasma sintering, the next step is to do ceramizing. So, once you make this glass material, ceramizing treatment will help to develop that crystalline phases in the glass matrix. Now, without spending much time on this uh, physical properties and other properties of the glass materials, I will be restricted, I mean I will restrict my the this module on the uh, in vivo biocompatibility of these materials. So, what you see this is that femur of a rabbit and in this femur what you see that there are three holes, it is like evenly spaced holes not like very too off too close. So, evenly spaced hole spare spaced holes were drilled using that precision ultra microtome and this within microtome you can make that phi is 2 mm that is the as per that you know <coughs> I have uh, ISO standard. So, as per the ISO standard 2 millimeter hole is drilled and the length of the rod or cylindrical rod that goes inside which is made of the glass ceramic materials, it is typically 5 to 6 mm uh, in length. So, this kind of dimension is to be closely fitted into this femoral defect and this in this femoral defect that after that after you put these things the next stage is to just to stitch the wound. The, that once the wound is closed you have to take care of the animal sufficiently and appropriately so that you can observe their natural behavior of the animal, you can monitor the weight change of the animal after this implantation is done and you can also see any abnormal activity and inflammation which you can see from very easily from outside just for the macroscopic view. All those things you do and then after that desired time period that you can sacrifice the animal as approved by the institutional animal ethical committee uh, and animal com 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 committee. So, this is the shown that you know that one can do this uh, hole in that hydroxyapatite bio glass. So, this is that and in every animal uh, every animal testing or preclinical experiments I have explained to you before in with sufficient details that you have to use some control implant. The use of the control implant is to make sure that you do this you implant the control, imp control implant in the same animal itself. So, that you can compare the osseointegration behavior of a material which is already proven to be biocompatible with that of the test implant. In the present case test implant is your uh, 100 percent strontium substituted silica alumina phosphate with glass ceramic and your control implant is that uh, hydroxyapatite bioglass materials. So, this is what you can see that another view that hydroxyapatite bioglass material which is used is control implant that is closely fitted into the femoral defect cavity. And in this femoral defect uh, after this all this test uh, implantation is done animal is sacrificed then you take that explant and then you take a small tissue samples in this uh, film and then you can do further uh, processing like tissue processing like you can do embedding, embedded bone, then sections cut by the diamond saw, then you make thin sections, you can polish it lightly, then you can stain it in the stiffness blue staining region and then you can do uh, fluorescence microscope, optical microscope observation. Now, X-ray radiographs of the femurs, uh, this is this just show that you can see that how these femurs are being placed. This is one implant, this is second implant, this is third implant and from this difference in the density of this uh, X-ray uh, this one that you can see that how this material can you can identify. So, in this particular case that hydroxyapatite based bioglass that is one of the known one of the material with a proven biocompatibility property that is not radio opaque. 
whereas glass ionomer or this particular this particular this silica based glass these are actually uh, clearly radio opaque. This is the macroscopic image of this uh, explant and then you can see the three implants you can uh, not very clear, but you can somehow able to identify that three implants are there and around that that is bone has been regenerated. So, that it is kind of it shows that integration without any histology section it shows some first indication or first um, refresh on the integral of the osseointegration integration of this materials. This is more clearly seen because uh, one is a radio opaque and one is not radio opaque you can see this three implants very clearly uh, seen along with this femur and you can see that there is no obvious uh, gap or there is no obvious discontinuity around the implant this is the right limb. The other things I must emphasize here that as far as possible all the control implants and all the test implants are to be implanted in the same animal in the same strain itself. So, like you cannot do like three implants in one animal although the species is same and you cannot do in the next animal the three other implants simply because the moment you change the animal their health status although they belong to the same species same strain their health status may be different their age may be different their sex may be different. So, if all these things change it is not fair on somebody's part to compare the biocompatibility property of the test implant to the control implant. Now, to avoid any extraneous influence which is not related to material itself it is important for somebody to imp uh, put the imp uh, test implant and this control implant in the same animal. This is the histology images. Now, you can see this is how it is how it shows that this is your thin slice and this is your implant here and, and around the implant you can see that all the cellular activity here and you can also see that this implant is not very uh, dense you can see that there is also porosity uh, in that implant. The same is see uh, can be seen in the test implant site newborn. This is like more histology images and this histology images essentially show you that uh, this histology images essentially show you that there is some place here and you can see this is some kind of uh, uh, indication for the osteoblast cells around that implantation uh, around that bone implant interface. So, this hydroxypate bioglass composition again you can see that how these uh, cells and then uh, host tissue and then this is your implant part and this is your host tissue part you are just seeing that you are just seeing the uh, cross section image here in that optical microscope. So, here you can see that there is a very continuous implant uh, continuous interface and also see certain cellular features in that host tissue around the implant. Now, one of the uh, one of the additional apart from histology one of the things one can also do is that to see the progression of the bone formation in vivo. So, for that what people do is that uh, uh, the veterinary surgeons can inject certain stain like xylenol orange during up in the post implantation period not at the time of sacrifice, but before the point of sacrifice before the time point of sacrifice. The idea is that those stains will go diffuse to that implant and tissue interface and then they will deposit on that implant tissue interface and then when you will do the some fluorescence microscopy you can see it will give you certain contrast which is characteristic of that particular staining agent. In this particular case when you see the 12 weeks post implantation what you see here this is your host bone structure this is your implant and it is certainly show this xylenol red stained image and this xylenol red stained image essentially show when there is bone formation has been initiated. So, the similar kind of features of the bone formation also has been shown in that hydroxide bioglass, but qualitatively from these two image what you can see here that qualitatively that bone formation perhaps is little bit more here in this case of that our test glass material. 
this is just a comparison of that control implant and the test implant and what I would like to bring to your attention is that, that this is your implant our test implant and around that you get very characteristic region the way I am sketching. So, this characteristic region and this particularly when I make a dotted region this dotted region. So, this dotted region is the area where new bone has formed. Okay. So, this dotted region is characteristic or it indicates this bone formation it is very uniform you do not see any discontinuity in that bone implant and bone interface. The second thing that you observe here that again in the separate set of histology images this is your implant here and this is the region in the different region of the bone formation you just see at a different magnification how this they appear. Okay. So, this is the other things that you see this is your test implant here and this is after 12 weeks and this is the region that histology stained image. Now, this blue region there you can see that collagen as well as some osteoblast cells like bone forming cells their, their activity at the bone implant interface. This is a scanning electron microscope image just to show that is in that osteons and so on in that uh, in the host bone structure and this is the host bone structure and your material is somewhere here down this side. This is some more histology images just to show characteristic uh, uh, cellular morphology in that host bone around the implant. One of the things that I have mentioned while uh, discussing the, uh, the preclinical study that microcomputer tomography is been now extensively used to uh, quantify the bone regeneration process also to develop better qualitative understanding of the bone formation in three dimension. And this is just to show you that this microcomputer tomography you can use directly on the explant. So, after 4 weeks you take the explant and you, you scan it in the micro CT this is what you get in the 3D image. So, what you get in the 3D image you remember that we you started with a cylindrical uh, cross section sample or cylindrical samples like I told you that 2 millimeter diameter and this is that 1 millimeter in uh, micron bar here or length scale here. So, this is your 2 millimeter diameter and this is your around 4, 4 to 5 millimeter in length. So, whether the implant A that whether implant can retain the shape at different time point in the post implantation b if the shape is not retained whether there is any shape distortion or whether there is any sign of the degradation of the implant in vivo. So, if the implant changes its size and shape that will essentially indicate the degradation of the material in vivo. Okay. And also you one can do certain analysis to obtain bone volume that is the BV divided by total volume of this material of this implant. Okay. So, bone volume by total volume that ratio one can measure or determine from this micro CT values. Now, higher the bone volume to total volume or if the bone volume to total volume is more than 0.95 certainly that implant is very effective to regenerate the bone. If the bone volume to total volume is less then what will happen that implant is not that effective at that time point for the bone regeneration purpose. Now, let us look at this data a little bit carefully. So, this is your uh, HA bio glass this side and this side is your strontium substituted glass ceramic materials. Now, what you see that after 4 weeks and after 12 weeks. So, this total this, this top panel is 4 weeks bottom panel is 12 weeks uh, micro CT results. Now, what you see here that if you compare this to this only with the control mit control implant. So, after 4 weeks is 0.77 bone volume to total volume after 12 weeks it is 0 0.80. Compared to that in that strontium substituted materials at that initial period of 4 weeks it is 0 0.62 
and bone volume to total volume it is 0.81. So, although after 4 is bone regeneration is not that high like a control implant, but certainly it is comparable when you compare the 12 weeks results. Okay. So, what are the implication of this results? The implication of the results is that quantitatively the 100 percent strontium substituted glass ceramics may not be as effective to induce early osseointegration. However, at the long term osseointegration is concerned, it is as effective as the control implant. I am mentioning this so that you understand how to interpret and how to signify this micro CT results from quantitative perspective. Uh, this is just this uh, more uh, more view of this 3D micro CT images of this uh, glass ceramic materials. What you see here, this is a grayscale image. So, you see that this is your intermedullary cavity here, this is that outer shell. So, you just cut a section and then you see that this is your implant. This implant is kind of put it inside and then you can see here is a femoral defect from this angle. Okay. So, this is the implant which is inserted and this implant goes in okay, and after you put it into, into intermedullary cavity, after you see that for how is the shape of the in, in implant in the three dimension. Okay. And this is the 2D slices of this material and from this you can see that 2D slices that there is certain bone mineralization density what we called BMD. So, what is bone mineralization density? bone mineralization density quantitatively you quantitatively will tell you that what is the mineral content in that host bone around this material or what is the mineral content in the new bone. Now, why bone mineralization density is important because when let me go back to some histology image just to show you. Now, you have this implant okay, and this is your host bone structure host bone means which was kind of part of the osseous structure of the experimental animal that is your rabbit. Now, this region you can see this dotted region, this region is the region where there is a neobone formation. Okay. Now, in this neobone you see that osteoblast cells and so on and so forth. Now, what do I mean by BMD bone mineralization density is that once this bone starts forming around the implant or in the small cavity around the implant, this bone may not be matured enough at different time point of the implantation. That matured bone means which will have composition wise or property wise to some extent similar to that of the host bone will have bone mineralization density equivalent to that of the host bone. But during the process of bone maturation, this bone mineralization density increases, and that is what exactly happens in this particular case. That your BMD values, what you are getting here, you can see that BMD values is is fairly fluctuating, and at different time, and then the BMD values, the unit of BMD values is that milligram of hydroxyapatite per centimeter cube. So it is like what is the equivalent to value of the milligram of hydroxyapatite that is present in the natural bone and what is that milligram HA that is present in this newborn structure that is forming. This is certain interesting results in that microcomputer tomography what you see it gives a color contrast at this left hand panel. Now, this color contrast also you can see that this different color contrast tells you that what is the thick thickness of the tissue. Okay. Tissue thickness showing different color for example, 2.1 millimeter this 2.1 millimeter is the more red. So, around 2 millimeter tissue thickness is there. Now, if you look at this particular case, if you look at this particular case that almost all the almost all the uh, implant that is the cylindrical uh, shape that is, is covered with this thick tissues around it and this thick tissue typically have a thickness somewhere around 2 millimeter. 
The same is however not true for the control implant and this is after 26 weeks and you see that all kinds of different kind of uh, green, mostly green, uh, green color contrast you can see around the implant essentially meaning that tissue thickness or bone tissue thickness on this control implant is not certainly towards the red region, but it is less than that. So, from the tissue thickness also quantitatively you can understand that what is the quantitative tissue or bone regeneration around the uh, implant. 